the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 190 From the Second Book of Chronicles The Revolt Against Rehoboam Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. And when Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it, for he was in Egypt, whither he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke upon us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Come to me again in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men, who had stood before Solomon his father while he was yet alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be kind to this people and please them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him and stood before him. And he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put upon us? And the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to the people who said to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but do you lighten it for us? Thus shall you say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father laid upon you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered them harshly, and forsaking the counsel of the old men, King Rehoboam spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it, my father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king did not hearken to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by God that the Lord might fulfill his word, which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king did not hearken to them, the people answered the king. What portion have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Each of you to your tents, O Israel. Look now to your own house, David. So all Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, and the people of Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam made haste to mount his chariot, to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Judah and Benjamin fortified. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah, and Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors, to fight against Israel, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah the man of God, say to Rehoboam the son of Solomon king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your brethren. Return every man to his home, for this thing is from me. So they hearkened to the word of the Lord, and returned and did not go against Jeroboam. Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and he built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Edom, Tekoa, Beth Zur, Soko, Adulam, Gath, Maresha, Ziph, Adaram, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ayalon, and Hebron, fortified cities which are in Judah and in Benjamin. He made the fortresses strong, and put commanders in them, and stores of food, oil, and wine. And he put shields and spears in all the cities, and made them very strong. So he held Judah and Benjamin. Priests and Levites support Rehoboam. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him from all places where they lived. For the Levites left their common lands and their holdings and came to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons cast them out from serving as priests of the Lord, and he appointed his own priests for the high places, and for the satyrs, and for the calves which he had made. And those who had set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came after them from all the tribes of Israel to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord, the God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they made Rehoboam the son of Solomon secure, 
for they walked for three years in the way of David and Solomon. Rehoboam's Marriages Rehoboam took as wife Mahalath the daughter of Jeremoth the son of David, and of Abihail the daughter of Eliab the son of Jesse, and she bore him sons, Jeish, Shemariah, and Zaham. After her he took Maka the daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abiyah, Atay, Ziza, and Shelemith. Rehoboam loved Maka the daughter of Absalom above all his wives and concubines, he took eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and had twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters, and Rehoboam appointed Abiyah the son of Maka as chief prince among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. And he dealt wisely, and distributed some of his sons through all the districts of Judah and Benjamin, in all the fortified cities, and he gave them abundant provisions, and procured wives for them. Egypt attacks Judah. When the rule of Rehoboam was established and was strong, he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem with twelve hundred chariots and sixty thousand horsemen. And the people were without number who came with him from Egypt, Libyans, Sukiim, and Ethiopians. And he took the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah, who had gathered at Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You abandoned me, so I have abandoned you to the hand of Shishak. Then the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is righteous. When the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, They have humbled themselves, I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless they shall be servants to him, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, he took away everything. He also took away the shields of gold which Solomon had made, and King Rehoboam made in their stead shields of bronze, and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard, who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard came and bore them, and brought them back to the guardroom. And when he humbled himself the wrath of the Lord turned from him, so as not to make a complete destruction. Moreover, conditions were good in Judah. Death of Rehoboam So King Rehoboam established himself in Jerusalem and reigned. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Namah the Ammonitess, and he did evil, for he did not set his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, from first to last, are they not written in the chronicles of Shemaiah the prophet and Abedo the seer? There were continual wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abiyah his son reigned in his stead. From the Book of Proverbs If one gives answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. A man's spirit will endure sickness. But a broken spirit who can bear? An intelligent mind acquires knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him. And brings him before great men. He who states his case first seems right. Until the other comes and examines him. The lot puts an end to disputes. And decides between powerful contenders. A brother helped is like a strong city but quarreling is like the bars of a castle. From the fruit of his mouth a man is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. The poor use entreaties. But the rich answer roughly. There are friends who pretend to be friends. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. From the Epistle of Paul to the Romans Life in the Spirit 
there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Any one who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba! Father! It is the Spirit Himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified with Him. From the Catechism The Signs and the Rite of Confirmation In treating the rite of confirmation, it is fitting to consider the sign of anointing and what it signifies and imprints, a spiritual seal. Anointing, in biblical and other ancient symbolism, is rich in meaning, oil is a sign of abundance and joy, it cleanses, anointing before and after a bath, and limbers, the anointing of athletes and wrestlers, oil is a sign of healing, since it is soothing to bruises and wounds, and it makes radiant with beauty, health, and strength. Anointing with oil has all these meanings in the sacramental life. The pre-baptismal anointing with the oil of catechumens signifies cleansing and strengthening, the anointing of the sick expresses healing and comfort. The post-baptismal anointing with sacred chrism in confirmation and ordination is the sign of consecration. By confirmation Christians, that is, those who are anointed, share more completely in the mission of Jesus Christ and the fullness of the Holy Spirit with which He is filled, so that their lives may give off the aroma of Christ. By this anointing the confirmant receives the mark, the seal of the Holy Spirit. A seal is a symbol of a person, a sign of personal authority, or ownership of an object. Hence soldiers were marked with their leader's seal and slaves with their masters. A seal authenticates a juridical act or document and occasionally makes it secret. Christ Himself declared that He was marked with His Father's seal. Christians are also marked with a seal. It is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has commissioned us. He has put His seal on us and given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. This seal of the Holy Spirit marks our total belonging to Christ, our enrollment in His service forever, as well as the promise of divine protection in the great eschatological trial. The Celebration of Confirmation The consecration of the sacred chrism is an important action that precedes the celebration of confirmation, but is in a certain way a part of it. It is the bishop who, in the course of the chrism mass of Holy Thursday, consecrates the sacred chrism for his whole diocese. In some Eastern churches this consecration is even reserved to the patriarch. The liturgy of Antioch expresses the epiclesis for the consecration of the sacred chrism, Myron, in this way, Father, send your Holy Spirit, on us and on this oil which is before us and consecrated, so that it may be for all who are anointed and marked with it holy Myron, priestly Myron, royal Myron, anointing with gladness, clothing with light, a cloak of salvation, a spiritual gift, the sanctification of souls and bodies, imperishable happiness, the indelible seal, a buckler of faith, and a fearsome helmet against all the works of the adversary. When confirmation is celebrated separately from baptism, as is the case in the Roman Rite, the liturgy of confirmation begins with the renewal of baptismal promises and the profession of faith by the confirmants. This clearly shows that confirmation follows baptism. 
When adults are baptized, they immediately receive confirmation and participate in the Eucharist. In the Roman Rite the bishop extends his hands over the whole group of the confirmants. Since the time of the Apostles this gesture has signified the gift of the Spirit. The bishop invokes the outpouring of the Spirit in these words. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit. You freed your sons and daughters from sin. And gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them. To be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of right judgment and courage. The spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The essential rite of the sacrament follows. In the Latin rite, the sacrament of confirmation is conferred through the anointing with chrism on the forehead, which is done by the laying on of the hand, and through the words, a chi pe sinaculum doni spiritus sancti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the Eastern Churches of Byzantine rite, after a prayer of Epiclesis, the more significant parts of the body are anointed with myron, forehead, eyes, nose, ears, lips, chest, back, hands, and feet. Each anointing is accompanied by the formula in Greek which in Latin, Sinaculum Doni Spiritus Sancti, the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. The sign of peace that concludes the rite of the sacrament signifies and demonstrates ecclesial communion with the bishop and with all the faithful.